there has been an amazing push for human-based spaceflight. But with that comes the increased concern of the physical toll that such an exploration can have on those involved. Though the lack of gravity produces a multitude of risks, the unfiltered full spectrum of the cosmic and ultraviolet radiations that bombard deep space is nothing short of a threat. The current shielding for space shuttles is not enough to prevent radiation from coming into the spacecraft, since an increase in shielding only increases the dosage absorption. A biological modification must be explored, and the answer is a lot closer than we think. Tardigrades, also known as water bears, are some of Earth's most extremophilic multicellular organisms. Originally discovered in 1773, these eight-legged microscopic creatures have been around for over 500 million years. What makes these guys such a rare case is that they are multicellular animals with extreme tolerance to a multitude of the harshest conditions, even deep space. A study performed by the European Space Agency in 2007 known as TARDIS, no, not that one, tested the limits of two species of tardigrades in the deep vacuum of space for 10 days, which included enough dosage of cosmic radiation and raw UV radiation to cause irreversible DNA mutations, which could lead to tumorigenesis, memory impairments, and ultimately death. But not only did all the tardigrades survive the full dosage of cosmic radiation and the vacuum of space, but 12% were also able to survive the UVB-UVA spectrums making them the first animals to survive the full conditions of outer space. Scientists determine mainly two components that makes these tiny creatures so tough. Their ability to go into a form of desiccation, as well as their vast array of radiotolerant proteins. Desiccation, an inactive state in which a tardigrade loses 97% of the water in their body, plays a large role in their extremophilic abilities but cannot be stated with certainty to play a role during irradiation due to the contradicting data found by different experiments. Thus, basic heat shock proteins and DNA repairing proteins like the HSP70 and the MRE11 proteins, just to name a few, play a large role in mending the damaged DNA as well as the cells of a tardigrade. However, these proteins are not unique to their phylum and can be found in other organisms, even us. The protein that most scientists are interested in is known as the Desut protein. Originally discovered in the Ramazotias varionata species by Takuma Hashimoto and 27 other Japanese scientists, this tardigrade unique protein is hypothesized to protect DNA, almost like a shield. It is only hypothesized because it has only been determined that the protein is associated with the nuclear DNA. It is not specified how. However, an experiment utilizing human embryonic kidney cells, also known as HEK293 cells, supports this hypothesis since the scientists saw a 40% reduction in double-stranded breaks in the DNA. Remember the first protein that I mentioned, the MRE11 protein? Well, it turns out that Homo sapiens, or humans, only have one gene that codes for the complex in which that protein is associated with, also known as the MRE11 complex. This complex is a DNA damage response complex that consists of three proteins, the MRE11, the RAD50, and the Nibrin. And although this complex is not always error-free, it has been proven to be incredibly efficient at fixing double-stranded breaks in DNA. Keep this in mind while I tell you that tardigrades don't just have one, but four genes that codes for this specific complex. So if humans were to obtain the same amount of MRE11 complex proteins, would it have the same effect as it does in tardigrades? This is the premise of my research, to explore ways in which the foreign tardigrade genes can be somehow implemented for the benefit of human and plant cells in order to obtain a similar defense during space travel. The evidence of it being a possibility is already there, as shown with the Desut protein and the human kidney cells. It's just a matter of expanding on that evidence. With the help of a George Mason University professor, Professor Lee Andrew Solomon, I will begin to research chemical and biological ways in which the tardigrade proteins and processes can be integrated into other biological organisms. My hope is that this paper-based research will inspire scientists to explore these ideas, because not only could this research create a future of human spaceflight where radiation risks for astronauts and cultivated crops are mitigated, but could lead to the eradication of life-threatening diseases all over the world.